So, Jyoti Kumar, how is work going on? In which areas you are currently working? Well, uh, I'm working little bit in the Himalayas as well. Okay. Other than that, Deccan <laughs> and a little bit of coal bed methane projects around Eastern India. Okay, okay, okay. That's great. That's great. Work is fine so far. Uh -huh. That's the most important thing. The research should go it just, on. just had a small setback. We had a little bit of hmm. fire incident in our labs. Oh so, my god. When? When? So, it was like a month back. Okay, okay. And, and then? We are now sitting in a temporary space. Means our, my lab was not that much affected. Mm -hmm. But uh, the space we have been evacuated. So we can't mm -hmm. work there. So experiments okay. and everything are not being done. But okay. the are fine. So some kind of short circuit maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So it's on a different lab that happened, but in the same oh. corridor. Oh. oh my God. <clears throat> So it will take a time to get Yeah, it will take some time before uh, we are back in business. <laughs> Onupamda, how are you? Shantanu, you are you are abroad. Shantanu? Hello, Unubonda, hello. Ah, Kikobor. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, to make America. I'm in Auckland and got stuck here because it, it has Auckland. been raining Achai. for last three days heavily. New Zealand, eh? okay. Ah, so, so, airport is closed actually till day hey, till tomorrow. Hey, shumai, hey, shumai. It's very natural. Mm. <laughs> I was searching for a microphone point, but it is not there. There was only one microphone. Hello, hello, hello. Where is the secretary? He's not yet, yet here. Achha, of course, Santonu is also one of the secretaries now. But where is Santonu Bose? He'll join soon. No, we still have time. We still have time. It's four now, so we can wait for a while. Let's wait for five more minutes, then we'll start. Sure, sure. Oh.
गुड आफ्टरनून एवरीवन गुड आफ्टरनून सुब्रत दा थैंक यू नमस्कार प्रोफेसर चट्टोपाध्याय हां तो बोलो की खबर हां ये तो चल छे हां चल छे एवरीथिंग फाइन हां क्वाइट वेल मैडम कैमोन आछन ठीक आ जेन हां भली आछन थैंक यू ओके प्रोफेसर मुखोपाध्याय नमस्कार हां थैंक यू हां डॉक्टर सेन नमस्कार यस नमस्कार गुड आफ्टरनून दिलीप दिलीप दा फिर আমি এখন রুলকিতে আচ্ছা মাঝখানে আপনি ওই এস সময় বোধহয় ছিলেন না ডি এস এস সময় আমাকে না না ছিলাম না ছিলাম তখন তখন নাতনিদের কাছে দিয়েছিলাম হুম হুম তাই বলল অনেক দিন বাদে তো সবাই একটু বেরোতে আরম্ভ করেছে আফটার দ্যাট হ্যাঁ হ্যাঁ দুই বছর দুই বছর দুই দুই বছর কি তারও বেশি তার আগে থেকে ভেবে যাচ্ছি কবে যেতে পারবো কবে যেতে পারবো হুম এন শান্তনু এসেছিল ও বলছিল আপনার সঙ্গে বোধহয় ও ওইতে আপনারা বোধহয় একটা প্রজেক্ট করছিলেন না এতে হ্যাঁ গিয়েছিলাম আমি ফিরে আসার পরে ফিল্ডে গিয়েছিলাম হ্যাঁ বলবো যে দিলীপ ভাই এসেছিলেন আমাদের সাথে ফিল্ড করতে ওয়েট ফর টু মোর মিনিটস এন্ড উইল স্টার্ট আই থিং 4 ও 5 ইফ ইজ দ্য গুড টাইম টু স্টার্ট শিওর শিওর पारिसनी करते स्टार्ट उड़ा जी लाइव स्ट्रीमिंग हाँ स्टार्ट हो गया चल चल ऑल राइट ओके ठीक है ठीक है All right. I think uh, let's just begin. Okay. Shall I start then? No. Just let me introduce you, uh, Koshikda, and then you can uh, start. Oh, that's okay. Just okay. 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 Uh, from Wadia Institute of Himalayan Geology uh, he did his uh, phd from iit kharagpur in 2006 and since then he has been working as a scientist at uh, wadia institute uh, his research interest includes meso and micro scale structures along with the metamorphic evolution of crystalline rocks found in the various segments of the himalayas he has also an interest in 
two-ton emplacement, anataxis, melt migration, and mineralogical and petrological aspects of alkaline and ultramafic rocks. With this very short introduction, as uh, Dr. Shen suggested, uh, the your, Dr. Shen, please fire up your presentation. And, Thanks uh, a lot. Presentation. Thank Thanks you. a lot, Jyotimoy. I'll start. So now it is in uh, a slide mode, presentation mode. I hope it is visible to all of you. Uh, it is visible and uh, everything is okay, fine. fine. Go so, ahead. So first of all, I would like to thank Jyotimoy and also interact with you. Now, this uh, the work that I am going to present is a part for, of a uh, sponsored project by Ministry of Earth Science. It is also part of the PhD work of Ms. Alasri Day. Uh, basically, it's her work. I am just uh, stealing her uh, thunder. And of course, Professor M. Montani, who helped me with the EBSD analysis. And this work basically gave me an opportunity to work with him after like 15, uh, 15 16 years since my PhD. So <clears throat> the outline is basically just briefly, I will just talk about what basically is USP metamorphism and eclogites are all about, although all, all of you know that. Then the geology of the study area, the objectives, then the results and inferences, as well as uh, the limitation of the studies. These are the things I'll be talking about. <clears throat> so, uh, USP or ultra high pressure metamorphism can be defined as when the metamorphism takes place at a pressure range of 2.7, above 2.7 uh, uh, GPA. And the temperature, although generally it is from above 600 degrees, but sometimes uh, we have seen in, in places where the, the USP metamorphism can take place at a temperature as low as 520 to 530 degree temperature as well. Mostly the uh, oceanic crustal protolith and sometimes the continental uh, part of the continental crust also associated with mafic and ultramafic rocks. Then is an unusually dense metamorphic rock. Uh, the typically basaltic composition, the main two constituent or diagnostic minerals are omphacite, that is sodium bearing clinopyroxene, and uh, pyroprich uh, garnet. These two are the characteristics of e eclogetic rocks. And some USP means high pressure polymorphs of quartz, maybe in, uh, say, quasite, <coughs> can also be present in ultra high pressure eclogites. Then the tectonic settings, one is basically will be low temperature and high pressure echoids, mostly from in the metamor USP metamorphic terrains. They are thought to de derive mostly from subduction tectonics and from blue schist, although from continent, although, although in case of continental echoids nowadays, it's saying that the, a, a blue schist uh, origin is not always necessary. Then median temperature uh, that derives from amphibolites, then high temperature echoids. <laughs> where the geo geotherm is uh, abnormally hot and so in most cases it derives from mafic granulites or mafic mag it can derive from mafic magma as well. Uh, this is the global distribution of eclogites. More or less there are at least uh, 20, uh, or, although not necessarily always USP, but 20, uh, at least 20 major USP uh, terrains have been identified so far in the and I think this is a uh, just a study from 2004. Maybe now it is much, uh, maybe slightly more than 20 localities. Anyway, and in the Himalaya, the eclogites <coughs> uh, or the uh, high pressure uh, eclogites, uh, no, not necessarily always ultra high pressure eclogites, can be divided into two parts. One is the basically present in the western segment of the Himalaya. One is in the Pakistan, that is the Kagan Valley. Then Somudadi, which what uh, I'll be talking about to some extent, then uh, Stark Valley also, that or uh, in, in, in the Western Himalaya. And in the in case of Eastern Himalaya, there, there is, uh, in India, there in Sikkim and Bhutan, and in Nepal, like Arun River Valley and Ahmad Rai Massif. Now, the basic difference between these two eclogites are the Eastern eclogites are orthopyroxene bearing, and they, are, uh, they have a granulitic, strong granulite overprint which is lacking in the Western uh, eclogites. And uh, the study also suggests that the exhumation rate of the Western eclogites are much faster. And the uh, uh, pressure of uh, metamorphism is also much higher in comparison to the Eastern eclogites. The Eastern eclogites are basically retrograded eclogites. They, are, they do not have the uh, characteristic signatures of uh, eclogetic assemblage left in them, only few relics, but mostly retrograded. Same is the case for Somuradi also. Only few samples or few one or two locations where the pristine eclogetic rocks are uh, can be 
obtained or sampled otherwise it is mostly a retrograded eclogite <clears throat> then the study area this uh, geological map of the uh, map of eastern ladakh that is trans himalaya it's taken from everton stick now the somurari uh, it's basically it's called as a nappe structure it is bounded by two faults one is the zilla fault towards its uh, northwest northwest and towards the southwest lies the karzo fault these two separates these two faults separate the somurari nappe from the zilla tophilitic melanges and the ladakh magnetic arc as well as the ophiolites the ophiolites basically which are remnant of the tethian oceanic crust prior to subduction <clears throat> and then to the east as lies some the, the some cambro ordovician granites are also present as well as the tethian shelf sediments now basically the somurari is a Uh, orthonize and paranizes uh, uh, means granitic nizes and paranizes, and the eclogites or the retrograded eclogites are embedded as mafic enclaves within them, which you, you can also see in the photographs to your right. And the uh, uh, this uh, puganize or the one part of the puganize that is the cambroordovician cambroordovician cambro granitic protolith. The age is like 450 to 500 million years, and the source for uh, the mafic eclogites is so far it means based on geochemical studies carried out by various workers they suggest that the volcanics related to the panjal trap is one most likely source for this uh, mafic or the mafic enclaves which were later metamorphosed or alta hypers metamorphosed during the subduction of the indian continent uh, uh, during the uh, himalayan collisional orogeny and these mafic enclaves uh, were metamorphosed into alta high pressure eclogites and then during exhumation they got retrograded so basically most of the eclogitic samples uh, that we see in the somurari that are retrograded eclogites and only few maybe in in some in say for example in this case the samples we have set, collected only the sample location that is 7x that can be seen as a purely composed of mostly garnet and opus opusite uh, no simplectites almost no simplectites or, or breakdown products are present but in the rest of the cases along with opusite and garnet Amphiboles and zoisites and symplectites and uh, I means and evidences of breakdown reaction that are widespread in most of the samples. So I would prefer to say, uh, means call them as retrograded eclogites or retrograded metabasic enclaves. <clears throat> so this is about the background, and we have sampled across the study area. Another thing is that as far as Somori Udrari region is concerned, it is basically it's a high altitude desert. So uh, you just take your sample wherever the samples are available whenever means wherever there is an exposure and there are some uh, the exposure where it can be sampled you take the samples uh, it is not the it is not you can make an ideal sampling like across the strike you know, strike and then at equal distance and all that that is not always possible in this region anyway but there are the number of uh, exposures are or mafic enclave mafic uh, uh, meta metabasic or retrograde eclogite enclaves are there there are many actually but many of them are retrograded also now some background information the evolution of somurari now the metamorphic evolution of somurari has been studied in detail by so many workers there are so many papers so i'll just try to give a gist of all this uh, basically uh, there are you can say there are four different events of metamorphism one is the prograde metamorphism that is related to the subduction then the peak high pressure to alta high pressure metamorphism that took place during the uh, maximum subduction of the in indian uh, continent that is say for, from from 2.5 gpa to 2.7 gpa at a temperature of 600 to 650 although there are some other studies which suggest a slight lower temperature then <clears throat> the near isothermal near isothermal decompression during its rapid exhumation at uh, uh, around 1 to 1.5 kilowatt and around 580 degree uh, 580 plus minus 50 degree centigrade then there is a analytic uh, study such there is a high temperature overprint also that is at like 0.7 to 0.9 kilobar uh, gpa pressure and uh, around 680 to 720 degree centigrade and then the final retrogression to green schist uh, conditions 
then uh, the petrochronology means metamorphism along with uh, uranium red geochronology and later on also some monazite geochronology suggests that the it's, it's, uh, the uh, subduction was pretty steep then uh, the timing of subduction and accretion of india with ladakh are more or less the same then uh, the integrated metamorphic and thermochronology suggest a rapid exhumation of the uh, somurari in the order to 7 to 12 mm per year then if you see this uh, pt power which is combination of pt power by uh, many uh, uh, studies that you can say there means uh, the funny thing is that most of the sample most in most cases the pt evolution has done from the same locality means the almost the same samples but to generalize you can say see that there is a progress path then uh, this uh, high pressure to ultra high pressure uh, metamorphic stage followed by a near isothermal decompression then a slightly if you say there is a slight curvature towards the right towards the temperature uh, in increasing temperature that is the high temperature overprint and finally the retrogression to green cyst conditions so four metamorphic events we can uh, envisage then before we carry out our uh, lattice paper orientation studies of different minerals mostly on for site we, we did some chemical analysis also through epma and there uh, uh, sensulato Ompasite, and uh, in most cases, although there are presence of jadeite rich parts also, but they are very rare, or and in some cases only present in the core of some uh, clinopyroxenes. These are uh, taken from two samples which we included in our uh, EBSD analysis. Then petrography, based on petrography, uh, as we can uh, we can divide them into three types of eclogites, uh, depending on the phase fractions of uh, garnet and ompasite type 1 that is the sample 7x which doesn't really have any symplectites or breakdown reactions very uh, little amount of horn amphibole and uh, uh, epidote and all that uh, ompasite and garnet are 25 to 20 to 25% then type 2 the breakdown starts the in there are increase in um, uh, the amount of symplectites and uh, breakdown reactions sodic and pyroxene uh, converts into more sodic calcic varieties Sodic calcic amphiboles uh, transfers into calcic amphiboles. Uh, amphibole breaks down into epidote and all that. And the phase fractions of garnet and ompasite also comes down. And then finally, very retrograde or type 3 kind of retrograde eclogites where the ompasite uh, phase fractions is very uh, low. And in most cases, in the, uh, the bottom right of the photograph, there are basically uh, the uh, mean, uh, means retrograded minerals like actinolite and chlorite uh, are uh, formed at the expense of uh, their high pressure counterparts and uh, antivolts and pyroxenes and all that. So basically, depending on the phase fractions on garnet and ompasite, we can say uh, divide them into three types. Mostly type 1 is very fresh, uh, almost least amount of retrogression, then type 2 intermediate retrogression and type 3 that is very retrograded. <clears throat> Some phase maps that, that we uh, phase maps uh, by EBSD, you can see the presence of garnet, the, the orange color minerals are garnet, the blues are quartz, and the green are ompasite. Now, uh, now we want to, uh, before you talk about the lattice preferred orientation or, or the um, gain boundary misorientation of the ompasite to understand the deformation mechanism, slip systems, and as, as well as it's, we are to know that uh, first the show that uh, means how deformed or how much distortion this uh, ompasites really have and at the same time uh, visually we want to show that how the amount of ompasite also decreases from type 1 to type 2 so that is one parameter that is called, called as the grain orientation spread the grain orientation spread of a particular grain is basically the difference in misorientation between each pixel within the grain is measured then the average misorientation counted then how the average misorientation varies from the uh, average misorientation of all the all the grains that uh, that is present within that phase. So basically, higher the grain orientation spread, you can say the higher the lattice distortion, and indirectly you can say that these grains are more deformed. <clears throat> and and the secondly, what you can see from type one, like from left top to uh, bottom right, you can also see that the phase fractions of ompasites are coming down, uh, are getting. Uh, it is more and more, uh, it is less and less. And in the last two uh, samples, even the last sample, there are hardly uh, any 
composite present because most of them has uh, been retrograded into first first into amphibores, then later to even uh, tremolite and chloride, uh, actinolite and chloride also. So this is also measure to visually show you the how type one from the I mean, the composite also changes in terms of its uh, fractions in from type one to type three. Echloides. Now the omphocyte of LPO of omphocyte and how the omphocyte LPO can be used to infer a strain basing basically it's the 001 and 010 axis. The distribution of the 001 and 010 axis are uh, depending on their distribution. We can differentiate it from L type to LS type to SL type to S type. I don't go into detail what is L type and to S type because you all know. So basically from prolate fabric to oblate fabric, depending on the uh, distribution of 001 and 010, we can infer. And in most cases carried out studies carried out by various workers in various in different parts of the world, starting from Alps and uh, uh, Tibet also. Then uh, there's a very recent paper by uh, Hafizur Rahman et al. from uh, the, uh, the uh, I think uh, that uh, Kagan Valley. Now they have also shown that the the means the means the, uh, the echloide which which represents the peak metamorphic condition or the UHV right the fresh echloides they basically uh, show the L type uh, fabric and as the uh, PT uh, pressure of metamorphism decreases or with with exhumation the, the L type uh, slowly trans, uh, changes into SL and then S type. So this is one basic on which we will try to classify our uh, omphocyte LEPO and, and we also will show that this is not, I means there are many other complications and this we'll also discuss in the following slides. This is the LPO of omphocyte. Now please, the, 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 the second from the top to your left, here you can see that the 001 is uh, almost parallel to the uh, XY plane that is uh, parallel to the lineation and parallel to the foliation plane. And the 010 is uh, normal or perpendicular to the foliation plane. That means it's a uh, typical L type fabric. And the 7XA is a type 1 echloide, as I have shown earlier. Basically, mostly composed of garnet and opposite, very less amount of retrogression and breakdown and all that. And <clears throat> apart from this, there are the samples like the samples to the Bottom of your left, here you can see that uh, they, in, instead of polar distribution, the, it is more like a girdle distribution, which uh, you, you can infer that it is more like a mixed fabric that is LS or SL type for like type two, most mostly. But in some cases, uh, say for example, the last one, which is the most retrograded samples uh, among the most retrograded samples and few others, the LPO doesn't really make any sense. It doesn't give any meaningful uh, inferences. So we can see the type one, the seven X, that is uh, typically showing the L type fabric, and for type two, it transition from LS to some uh, to S type. But type three doesn't really have any uh, meaningful uh, lattice preferred orientation. Then to uh, since. Uh, in uh, some of the samples, uh, it, it is giving us a mixed kind of uh, signals like LS and SL, and some doesn't really giving us any kind of uh, any signals. We also carried out a grain boundary misoriented analysis, low angle grain boundary misorientation analysis, means uh, means that the misorientation along its major three axis, uh, major axis are uh, plotted. Uh, the, the low angle gain one it, it helps us see that which uh, uh, means along which axis the uh, means maximum uh, slip has taken place now in most cases uh, uh, say for starting from the uh, uh, second from your left to <clears throat> you know, second and third and the uh, in the Bottom left, too, you can see that uh, it, is, it changes. Like from uh, sample 7x and 1y, the 001 axis is uh, more active uh, activity along the 001 plane because uh, 001 axis because the, the the pole to the 001 the maximum concentration is shown in the pole to the 001 that is the 010 and in some cases it is just the opposite 
operated uh, during any kind of deformation. So, but once the fluid activity takes place and the breakdown reactions takes place, fluid will fluid has a tendency to uh, help heal those uh, means uh, the zones of anastropy that are found or, or where the dislocation density has been maximum those but they will tend to heal that and then diffusion also comes into picture uh, picture now one once once this diffusion process which is a very integral part of symplectite formation uh, or and at the second and the thirdly the breakdown of the omphocyte omphocyte is breaking down and forming uh, in some cases and amphibole and sometimes from more sodic Omphocyte to sodic calcic omphocyte, basically omphocyte to diopside. So these are the three factors that also we taken into consideration before we try to make any interpretations in terms of uh, strain regime. So yeah, in one way we can say that okay, since we are getting some LS2 SL type fabric in some samples, so once the means the uh, peak subduction and uh, uh, rapid exhumation through through the narrow trail takes place and it comes to us. Uh, Relatively shallower depth in a collisional thickening when the uh, it uh, comes below the existing uh, uh, indo eurasian collisional zone, then means uh, and the and its following subduction uh, means the following uh, exhumation is more like more uh, at a low angle uh, path. Then flattening strain uh, have may have prevailed, but at the same time you have to take into consideration that whether you are interpreting the LP of two omphocytes or not. How many of them are really omphocytes and how many of them have, them have broken, broken down to diopside? And at the same time, the presence of symplectites and fluid infiltrations and all that. So both these things have to be taken into account. Now the thing why we have studied, taken uh, LP of quartz also, because quartz is not an ideal mineral that will give you, I means any ultra high pressure rock or high pressure rock. Quartz is the least uh, likely mineral to uh, be a signature of any high pressure metamorphism or earlier metamorphic event because the fabric of quartz changes very fast along with changing pressure and temperature. So in most cases, the quartz will basically show you the uh, means the last metamorphic events or among the last two metamorphic events. So one is one thing is very tempting to interpret the sea slip in quartz with the high pressure or the USP uh, metamorphic conditions. But you know, it is very like uh, unlikely that a quartz that was formed during that USB condition or or high pressure, since it's quartz, not quartzite, and it uh, retained that fabric even after this all two three metamorphic events is very unlikely. So we are more akin to interpret this sea slip or high temperature prism sea slip in quartz with the high temperature overprint event that is related to collisional thickening. That took place something uh, somewhere around 45 to 48 million years. So I'm really sorry, I forgot to completely forgot to talk about the ages and all that. Uh, anyway, the peak metamorphism is from 51 to 52, and then the isothermal decompression from 45 to 50, and then this around 45 to 42, this collisional thickening and the high temperature overprint takes place, followed by the green sea side 29 to 31. So this peak metamorphism. Uh, so uh, this is Koshik. This is yes. the age which is already published. All yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. These are not my ages, sir. These are all published. All the metamorphic, metamorphic path and the ages I am showing, they are all published. Sir. There are like 10, 15 uh, so papers. What, yeah. are, what are the what are the ages? I mean, which systematics they have used for this? Sir, uh, initially they have done mostly uh, uranium rate of uh, uh, recon. But one study by Donaldson in geology, they have done it in, in terms of petrochronology. Means they have shown that that this zircon is present within a omphocyte, or uh, within a omphocyte that is present within the mantle of the garnet. So they have really, you know, correlated to those edges with uh, metamorphic events. And some oh. argon-argon dates also have done been done. But I think DC Goer carried out some argon-argon dates. So which, which means so uh, compare it with the temperatures. So. You know, when you're talking, you're talking about biotite, uh, if it is giving 29 to 30 million years, you can say that the system must have came to a temperature to like 400 degrees centigrade, 350 degrees centigrade. Yeah, because argon-argon date, yeah, yeah. Uh, close-up temperature is low, yes, so it yeah, yeah. not work so the, the high temperature. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yeah. so, so the younger ages, like the green sea stages that I'm showing, I think most of them are from the DC West paper, they have carried out argon-argon ages. But the uh, higher uh, the means higher conditions, there are more the uranium rate of zircon. Although I would like to point out that even maybe uranium rate zircon may not be the ideal uh, character oh. always for metamorphic events because you know uh, how 
ठीक द रिंग इज बीइंग डेवलप्ड ड्यूरिंग द मेटामोफिजम इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सो नाउ इट इज पीपल आर डूइंग फॉर रूटाइल एंड टाइटेनाइट एंड ऑल दैट सो आई थिंक दे दैट दो थिंग्स लाइक दैट दे हैव अ क्लोजर टेंपरेचर ऑफ 550 टू 600 सो मे बी दे आर मोर रिलायबल नाउ इट इज बट आई एम नॉट aware of any such study that has been published in from somuradi maybe in uh, near future so currently all we have is uranium lead and argon argon mm, okay okay and finally the a, a slip that is can be basal or a, a prism a slip which is the most common of uh, yeah, uh, slip system in quartz shown in somuradi the eclogites as well as in, you know in the puganized some extensive quartz lq has been done by dotto and mukherjee that is one really uh, extensive and very elaborate paper published in tectonic physics they have painstakingly uh, means done a lot of samples of in, in quartz and uh, and quartz uh, slip systems and there is another paper by long et al that is in tectonics that is also same means the of the puganite that the host puganite that i am talking about quartz of the host puganite that has been studied ex- extensively but by, by these two papers very recent papers one is dipto's paper i think was in 21 and long is i think 22 so they have talked at the, in detail about the slip system present in the host puganites i am i am talking about the slip systems or quartz micro quartz slip system present in the uh, metabasic enclaves that are present within the puganites so these are again this uh, the lpo we are getting from quartz we can correlate this means i would prefer to correlate them with this later high temperature overprint event and the uh, followed by retrogression events i would say that this quartz lpo has nothing to do with peak peak metamorphic conditions because it is very unlikely that the squads will hold its uh, means high pressure slip system even after so many deformation events and retrogressions and all that so the inferences that i have talked is uh it has since we are we means the sample 7s which is the freshest of eclogite that is on a l type fabric we can see say that the peak metamorphism of deepest continental subduction or subsequent rapid exhumation tmcc took place in a constrictional regime uh, the subsequent exhumation shallow dress more not with a within plain strain regime but with a pinch of salt because uh, because you know omphasite lpo has weakened due to breakdown reactions simplified formation could infiltration that i have already discussed in detail the most retrograde samples may suggest that the, this is may have accommodated stain by grain size sensitive process like diffusion creep means uh, once the diffusion creep uh, comes into picture then and the healing of dislocation uh, means zones of dislocation uh, or intense dislocation boundaries are start to getting healed the lpo will weaken the lattice paper orientation will the strength of the lpo will weaken a slight uh, transition from 001 uh, axis and pole to 1001 plane to 1000 have been seen to from more most pristine to most retrograde eclogite this is nothing new means uh, nothing novel about this because may, many studies have shown the same thing what we are really expecting some uh, characteristic high pressure slip system that we haven't uh, uh, we could not obtain from any of the samples as i have uh, discussed earlier that the quartz lpo does not bear any signature of ehc metamorphism but may have modified developed during ht overprint and grinsis retrogression and finally uh the breakdown of the sympatite formation in omphasite appear to be a significant factor affecting the rapid exhumation of the tmcc so what we plan to do means we plan to do i i hope i'll be able to do it in uh, near future that we'll just you know target the sympatites now for evsd analysis and index like both amphibole and pyroxenes like whether they are epitaxial or topotaxial what is the relationship between uh, them during the and the breakdown and all that and so that this can give us any uh any insight into the strain regime and also strain regime these are these particular pressure temperature condition this is a future uh, work that i have in mind and i hopefully i'll be able to pull it off in near future <laughs> hopefully but so far means what the take home if you ask me that what is the take home from this study one is thing that if the if, if the eclogite is fresh if you are lucky to get a very fresh eclogite in omphasite means the evsd is a very um, very good proxy and, and it gives a lot of information not only the slip systems the deformation mechanisms and the stain regimes but once the breakdown and the retrogression uh, starts to yet then the you know lpo or deformation mechanism the lpo uh, has to be done very carefully everything has to be taken into account and uh, that's it now it's open to you all 
please ask whatever you I will try my best to answer. If I don't know the answer, I will simply say that I don't know. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Shen. Uh, the talk was quite insightful, and mm -hmm. thank you for sticking to time as yeah. well. Oh, so yeah. the floor awesome. is open for questions. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, please go ahead. If you can just raise your hand, and then uh, we can do it one by one. Professor Chotovadhai, please. Uh, Kaushik, hmm. I have uh, just a few queries. I mean, yes, one yes. is that. Uh, hmm. Have you seen this uh, when you are showing such clear uh, evidences of, say, L-type fabric or LS-type fabric? Mm -hmm. Have you seen anything like that in the microscope? No, 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 not at all. No. So, uh, only thing, only thing I can say that only one sample, that is sample three X A, that was very. I mean, the garnet porphyroblast and the and the quartz tails in the shadows, like quartz tails, were pretty well developed. But that is only in one sample. Only one sample. Yeah, but don't, the, don't hmm. you expect these kind of things to be also yeah. petrographically? Uh, so the thing is that means uh, means these uh, these eclogites that I am talking about means these metamorphous eclogites. Most of the thing in they are really massive eclogites. Means they are not very well foliated, or the foliate foliation is not that strong. Means you have to uh, only after uh, say cutting three parallel sections, then uh, tracing them, or you do AMS, we can uh, figure out the K1. K1, uh, so or the exit plane in most cases, like the more pristine it is. And for retrograded samples, the fabric is very, pretty well developed. And uh, as far as this uh, myelonitic uh, fabric, if you are talking about that, anything that resembles a myelonitic fabric or a uh, that can be interpreted in terms of a L-tectonite or something like that, uh, only one or two uh, instances where the very uh, Prominent this porphyr blast and the stain shadow of quartz has developed. But overall, yes, the omphasite do show a preferred orientations. But once the symplectite, uh, means the zones of symplectite comes, means when the means the breakdown of omphasites uh, starts to take place, it goes pretty haywire. Means means the pristine omphasites or the omphasites that are not broken down. And some in case of amphibole also that is in matrix, they have a very strong preferred orientation. But the breakdown zone or the zones where the breakdown is more prominent or the simple types is more, there are no such fabrics. Another thing I wanted to mm. ask is that uh, you are talking about a lot of simple types. So what mm. are these simple types compositionally? Are they uh, what what do are they producing? I mean, is it so a there are, uh, no, uh, CPX simple or something? There, there are two types of simple basically. One simple is basically the thing that uh, that plagioclase dioxide simple that is basically uh -huh. uh, related to the high temperature over it, and it also signifies that the protolith was eclogitic. And the second side of simple is basically uh, pyroxene amphibole. And uh, to some extent, garnet sometimes also means that the, these simple are mostly developed along the ring of the garnet. Uh, and uh, because and, because yes. generally if you see in granulites also I have not seen much mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. but in granulites you see frequently that when yes. there is, you are showing a, a S, I mean um, isothermal decompression mm -hmm. yes so in isothermal decompression you very often see say mm -hmm. garnet breaking down to CPS yes yes, yes 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 those are there those are there actually uh, that paper, that paper is currently under uh, review that we have also communicated so hopefully something will come out of that for that simple types also we have done some PT uh, zero section modeling also. And there are at least two different types of symplectite uh, colonies that are found during two different metamorphic events. The plagioclase dioxide is definitely during the high temperature overprint. And this uh, means garnet breaking down and CPX uh, into amphibole and CPX. So this is, this is, this is more uh, widespread, these uh, kind of symplectites. But yeah, if you ask me that simply, there are two types of symplectites. One is one we infer that is related to the near isothermal decompression, and second is related to the high temperature overprint. Another thing is, uh, just last question, yes, that sir. is, uh, why why do you think there is no S-fabric in this uh, dominant S-fabric in this uh, uh, eclogites? Sir, uh, 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 as far as the foliation is concerned, it means the host. Uh, uh, let me try and explain it to you, you do the best of my... Ability. The, the first of all, the host puganize, the host granitignize, or some in some cases it is paranized also that is present, that is well foliated. Okay. Uh -huh. Now within that, this mafic eclogites are present. Uh -huh. In most cases, they resemble a wooden, you can say, 
the most cases and the margin of this eclogyte this margin of the eclogyte is very well foliated mm. and the center of the eclogyte are pretty massive now mm. if you ask me that why don't you just study more more on the foliated part so that you can make interpretation on the I mean the strain regime in a more clear cut manner the, mm. now this foliated parts are retrograded okay uh, if you want to know about the peak metamorphic condition no but you know, Study the type three eclogites that you have mentioned. These are mm -hmm. retro retrograde. Very, very retrograde. Right? Yeah. So even they are also you are uh, your EBSD study shows that there is no S type. Uh, you know that S dominant. No, 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 uh, no, no, sir. I think there is one uh, one uh, confusion is that the EBSD is showing the distribution of the crystallographic axis. I mean, whether they are in concentration or in in a certain direction, in polar distribution or gradual distribution of any particular crystallographic axis. Mm -hmm. Now the sample can very well be foliated. Oh. And foliation means the take or the visible mesoscopy foliations uh, is a different thing. And the second thing is that means what I am trying to say most of the time is the foliation I am seeing oh. and the LPO I am showing. I am showing the LPO of omphacite. Oh. But the foliation I am seeing, they are not necessarily most of them are not omphacite anymore. Oh, that is true. That mm. is that has been that yeah. has retrograded to some other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And retrograded to some year. And second thing is that even if their omphocytes sensus is still there, but they have, if the diffusion creep uh, dominates at a later stage during the simplectide formation and all that, then the LPO will weaken again. Means there are many oh. other factors apart from structure that is even controlling the LPO. When if we take your argument, that is mm -hmm. fine. But my question is when mm -hmm. there is a, do you so there that much of continental uh, subduction as well as thickening? Mm -hmm. Is uh, you know there is a subduction channel kind of thing. Hmm. You, the, then your uh, LPOs show that there is no pure flattening fabric or even not a general flattening is not dominant. Yes, is yes, yes. That, that, no, 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 sir. That's exactly what I'm trying to say. That's what I have emphasized mostly. That whenever the samples are pristine, hmm. the fabric is truly representing the tectonic setting or the strain regime. But, mm. if, but, but when you are showing, when you are seeing that S type or LS type fabrics, where many other people from many other places have sh shown that, that when the you know during retrogression or, or during a later stage of exhumation of eclogite, the omphacite basically shows this flattening strain or uh, or the fabric that is related to flattening strain. What I am saying that uh, that it is very uh, likely to uh, means interpret in terms of key by it was L type and now it is L LS type to S type. What I am saying. That the L type is fine. It's a pristine omphocyte. I know I am just seeing the CP of omphocyte and all that. But when, when this mixed fabric or the transient fabric is coming, mm. the EBSD cannot tell me that whether one particular grain is an omphocyte or it is a diopsite. Or it cannot be it cannot tell me whether uh, the, the diffusion creep has some role to play. So I am saying that I am very uh, reluctant to interpret straightforward in terms of strain regime in places of this retrograde eclogite. I am saying yeah. that these uh, these factors has to be taken into consideration first. Okay. Uh, okay. I understand. So I'm not interpreting actually. Actually, I am pretty uh, reluctant re to interpret. I have means in the paper also I have seen I have said that although these fabrics show this, but these factors has to be evaluated further with whether this LS is because of seriously fatigue strain or because simply because of you know uh, seplectite formation and all that breakdown and all that. We don't know that. I don't know that. Okay. Mm. Okay. Thank you. Mm. Uh, Dr. Bhupesh Behar, if you can. Uh, hello, sir. Hello, all. So, since we are attending a group, like uh, my colleagues are with me, so they want to curious to know some questions. So, can you can they ask? Yes, of course. Please go ahead. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, okay. Uh, hello, Bhupesh. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, I have a few questions related to your misorientation uh, yeah. axis. Mm. Mm. Uh, so, if I remember correctly, this uh, your uh, slide with quartz mm. orientation analysis. So you said that you have dominance of uh, basal A and prism A slip system, right? In uh, most of the samples, means, uh, means, uh, means if you say that uh, it means only one sample, two sample, you will say the prism A slip is very dominant. And one, the basal is very dominant, uh, and uh, otherwise it's more like the A slips, yeah. And in two samples, only in two samples, the C slip is very very prominent. Okay, but you you like uh, you can uh, say this for in general for all the quartz you have, or just for particular sample? Uh, 
we have analyzed i think six to seven samples from the meta basic rocks in the oh. enclaves that are present and so we can i can talk about that but as far as the host that is the more granitic nice of the paranice that is present that quartz is very uh, extensively studied by uh, by uh, by dr deep prodatto and samudit mukherjee in one paper and nigel long and matthew con they have in another paper they i think they have also shown that in most cases it is basal or prism basically but in some in some cases prism c slip is also dominant in some samples yeah okay because in in examples that you shown i can mm. i i seen only uh, basically one example with basal slip yeah so yeah yeah sure 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 yes yes yes, yes 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 i completely ag agree with you if you can allow me to just show it again yeah, yeah. Uh, i'm i completely agree with you and the reason i can also explain I means if you say that like the, the, these are two samples that are present to the right in like the top one and the bottom one they are pretty good like uh, means the prism c slip and the and the in between middle you can say that prism a slip Yes, yeah, yeah, that's prism, yeah. But yeah. then, yeah, I was wondering and about the basal A, uh, because I see maybe only this one, uh, only the top one, only the top one, maybe. Yeah, and uh, the one, uh, you know, basically in this first one, I would mm. say you have a romp, maybe. Yeah, a romp, yeah, yeah. Uh, romp basically. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, and the mm -hmm. second one actually is only one with the with uh, with the basal A. Basal, right? yeah, and the, and then again, prism A, a slip is dominant in the. Hard one. Yeah. So mm -hmm. yeah, for for prism mm -hmm. C and prism A, I would mm -hmm. say yeah, you you have some evidence, mm -hmm. but maybe not so much for basal A. And considering that that some um, some people are even like in 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 Kilian's paper, for mm -hmm. example, uh, they have some kind of uh, like discussion mm -hmm. of unlikeliness of yeah, the okay. uh, of, yes, of yes. basal A uh, mm -hmm. sleep system to to mm -hmm. be at least frequent. Uh, okay. Natural okay. conditions, right? Okay. So yeah, okay. that's okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Mm, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. And cool. uh, another Thank question you. about uh, misorientation of uh, uh, that's uh, on phosphate. Mm. Uh, so in your paper, actually, there is stated that uh, your sample three X A indicates uh, one uh, zero zero one one zero zero sleep. Mm. It is, you said it's close to uh, 110 and uh, 010. I have to so say, right. is that basically, did you want to refer to 7XA or? No, I think 3X, 3XA, I may, I am not sure. I, because as far as 7XA is concerned and also the uh, 6YA, I think the, six, I mean the, uh, with the concentration of six, uh, the, this misorientation in, in certain axes are very prominent. But if you see like sample one Y A and then like eight X B means there are like uh, has to be multiple uh, uh, slip system has to be operated um, has to be yeah, yeah. operational. So I think yeah. if you are talking about seven X A, it, it means I am talk, talking about seven X A. Then it's perfectly fine. I think I hope. Yes. And yeah. uh, for six Y A, it, it is also perfectly fine. But as far as I have seen, shown, and I have also said in the inferences also, you know, this means that whatever we are talking is even I am talking about this interpretation of omphasite LPO. Mm -hmm. Means what I have said that uh, means in future studies, this means this retrogression of omphasite or breaking down of the omphasite has to be taken into consideration in a more real way because you know yeah. we are doing some misorientation axis, but we don't know whether diffusion creep has a huge role to play or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I won't be means although I have uh, means uh, I have made this interpretation on basis of the misorientation I have done, but I will all at the same time I myself will say that as far as the misorientation of the omphasite is concerned, seven x is perfectly fine. Oh, no problem with that. But once yes. the retrogression or the or the degree of retrogression increases, now I think uh, means the, if the LPO makes some senses, then uh, the misorientation axis might also make some sense. What one thing we we, we have tried. Later, that we have separated some omphasite grain uh, de depending on the grain orientation spread, also. You know, say for mm -hmm. example, the grain orientation spread which are higher than 2.5 degree, we have considered them as a maybe relic grains and recrystallized grains, like just following the method of Andrew Cross. Mm -hmm. Although he has done it for quartz, but but, but that was, but uh, I didn't get any meaningful uh, mm -hmm. uh, results from that. I haven't got any. Yeah, yeah, my my remark was basically related to, uh, to your mm -hmm. paper because, yeah, he. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. 
screen and show this nice example of 7xA, mm -hmm. which is yeah, nicely lying in 101, mm -hmm. the, the mm -hmm. maximum. Mm -hmm. But then in paper, you've stated 3xA mm -hmm. as a basically example okay. of uh, sodium. Okay, 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 okay. I was wondering if this is maybe like... Uh, okay, 3xA. No, 3xA is more... I think 3xA we consider is near to that... Uh, uh, means uh, this uh, 0, 1, 0 x is or the uh, means the pole to 0, 0, 0, 1 or something like that. Uh, means, yeah, uh, between uh, them uh, and even towards 0, 0, 1. Yeah, MUD is also pretty high, means uh, 3 and the concentration is also at a certain, only a certain point. So you can say that somewhere near this. That's why I'm here. <laughs> And, uh, you know, this is also the 6 y is perfectly fine, but, but for the rest, I think, at least for, for these, I think these multiple slip system has to be taken into account. For yeah, this. yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, yeah, I just thought that uh, for... Yeah, yeah, thanks, thanks a lot. Thanks. Yes, that is a very valid question and it's a valid point, actually. That actually is a very, very valid point that you have uh, raised. And... Uh, but yeah, I, okay. I guess yeah, that I have tried some uh, other thing, you know, <laughs> I tried to differentiate them on terms of GOS and like if we can distinguish between crystallize and relic, but uh, as far mm. as I'm concerned, I haven't got any meaningful result. I think yeah. this simplified has to be means addressed first, <laughs> means uh, either you get a fresh eclogite and interpret on them, but in most cases in somalody eclogites, I think it's better to, means what I would like to do that concentrate on simplectides first. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Mm -hmm. Dipto, kick over. Um, um, <clears throat> hi, sir. I'm doing good. How are you? <laughs> I'm also fine. Um, I'm sorry because I had another meeting to attend, so I I have mm -hmm. joined a bit late. No, no, it's, it's perfectly fine. It's perfectly, it is really nice to. See you after such a long time. Yeah. <laughs> anyone else, please, Jyotima, if there is yeah. anyone. Any, any further questions? Yeah. Professor Can I ask the... questions? Uh, like, what is oh, the dominant okay. slip system of omphacite? The dominant slip system of omphacite, as I have shown you in the... It, 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 it depends on the uh, strain regime. It depends on the strain regime. And what is, what is this one? Huh. This one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Means uh, if yes. the uh, zero zero one has a polar distribution parallel to the foliation plane and zero one zero has a gradual distribution normal to the foliation uh, foliation plane, then it's a polar strain. And just the opposite happens when it becomes to becomes object that zero zero one is becomes uh, has a shows a gradual distribution parallel to foliation. Zero one zero is polar distribution normal to foliation, and anything in between, you can say it's a uh, transitional kind of fabric. Means that is the existing knowledge about the omphacite LQ. I think these studies are mostly has been done some based on some experimental studies. Also, there are many studies. So this is the most standard uh, understanding of omphacite LQ, and there are many papers. I think you can start with this review paper by that I have cited. That's a very good paper. And uh, excuse me, sir. I have a question. Yeah, please, yeah. please. Yeah, so if you see the uh, omphacite CPOs, like you mm -hmm. have a bunch of figures. So if I'm not wrong, you mentioned that the CPO gets weakened as influence of this diffusion creep increases due to retrogression. If I'm not wrong, that's what I remember you were saying about the Yeah, yeah, yeah. What I am saying that, what I am saying that this L type here in, in the existing understanding of this omphacite L2 is that this transition from L type to S type takes place during the due to the change in strain regime, right? Yeah. What I am saying, what I am saying that since the intermediate kind of fabric that, that I have got in my samples, in most cases, they do not really follow this pattern either. Okay. Okay. They don't pattern, follow this pattern either. So, so that's for, although the number of grains are pretty high, it's although in all cases, I think apart from 6, 5, where they, which hardly has any emphasis, it is more, always more than 250 to 300. So I am saying that this randomness or the weak, Fabric and uh, in the fabric means the, the strength of the LQO, the weakening of the strength of LQO, maybe not only because of it, because of changing of strain regime, but more like it is more like a metamorphic metamorphism has a role to play. Means breaking down of omphacite and fluid infiltration and all that. That's what I have said. Means I say that although my uh, I am just coming back to this. Although uh, some of my fabric like this fabric, you can say that yeah, okay, this uh, your zero one zero has for the polar distribution. 
uh, normal defoliation and there's a gradual distribution like like that but in some cases like the, like this one like this one like the top uh, top in the right corner on the bottom corner they don't they don't make much sense so <clears throat> what i'm uh, suggesting is trying to say that this has to be explored that uh, means whether it is because of this changing strain regime or because of uh, oomphocyte is breaking down to dioxide and um, amphibole is also forming so and how whether amphibole is mimicking the LPO of oomphocyte or not so that's what the simple test means uh, I, I mean intend to do some detailed LPO of this of the simple types also in future maybe that, that will be a better year but as far as the fresh eclogites are concerned the, with the sense to stick to oomphocyte there is no problem it is showing perfectly perfect L type therapy but in somura getting a fresh eclogite is not that easy right? <laughs> Thank you, sir. Okay. Any any further question from the students or uh, Professor Mukhopadhyay or Professor Misra? Anyone, please. Yes, sir. It was a nice talk. Thank you, sir. Uh, of course, you concluded that from quads, mm. you really cannot um, interpret much. No, no, I won't say interpret, no, interpret the ultra high pressure or high pressure condition. That's only that means the later uh, metamorphic events can be very well interpreted in terms of, in fact, quad will be the best candidate if you want to talk about uh, yes, if, later metamorphic If you don't see any quartz fabric in, mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. your rocks, mm -hmm. then it becomes very difficult to mm -hmm. uh, interpret anything. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's one thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, because uh, quartz, you know, from alpha to beta quartz, uh, changeover is instantaneous. Even coesite is so difficult to preserve. Yeah, but, you know, but we, the, 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 the PT condition I have talked about or, or the EBS analysis, I have, there are no uh, coesites. And alpha to beta quartz, yeah, maybe from high temperature overprint sometime it can happen at 700 degrees centigrade. Maybe did that... That overprint signature overprint is there since we have pressure pressure type stress signature. Yeah, so that maybe the that's a good point actually. Maybe the C slip I am getting that is because of transition to alpha of alpha to beta. I haven't thought about it. Coesite was described from your no 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 yes coesite is there but the samples I have the indexed they they don't they didn't have any coesite. So it is so damn difficult to preserve coesite, right? Yeah, no, coesites, I think it is more likely coesites that you are found in the host organized. It's, it's more like quad cells, but people have shown all the coesite must be there in the eclogites also. Uh, I, I haven't seen, but yeah, it, it is known that coesite. Oh, yeah. we, we, don't, we don't see them because uh, it's so difficult yeah, I mean, to see preserve in, them. See in terms of Raman, I mean. Uh, it is so difficult uh, to preserve them. Mm. So obviously you cannot talk anything no, yeah. about eclogites. Yeah, in, in, in any case, I didn't really deal, I haven't de dealt with that uh, aspect in the... Mm. Of and uh, do you have any Kikuchi patterns that you can show us? Sir, uh, right now I do not have. It means that system is in the I do not have that. But if you uh, just send me your email, no, I'd be I'm happy just... to tell you. I, I, right I, now I do not have, sir. I do not have. I do not have. Right now I do not have. Okay. Mm. Okay. Mm. Thank you. Any other question? Professor Santanu Bose actually. Uh, sends his uh, excuses because he has a very bad voice. Okay, okay. <clears throat> yeah, I think because of cold. So, yeah. And then Sion Deep is here? He so says I hi. Yeah, Sion Deep is also here. Professor Santanu Mistra is also here. Yeah, Santanu, I talked to. I talked to Santanu. Yeah. It was really nice to see you all after, means, I don't know, <laughs> such a long time. Yeah, you should I join think... these meetings more. I think I met Santonu last year. I think Santonu and Dripto came. Uh, no, maybe last to last year. I think it was 2020. Dripto was it 2020 or 21? You and Santonu came to Adia? No, I mean, um, I went to Adia in yeah, 22. Yeah. And um, you two came, na? And you two came and no? No, um, yeah, yeah, <laughs> that was in the. And yeah, 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 okay, okay. Yeah. Nobody's any, any other questions from anyone, from the students? Okay. All right, if not, then I thank everyone for joining in today. Hmm. And also, and I thank. Uh, Jyotima, uh, please also yeah. add my email to the mailing list. I will do that. I'll you are on. You, you, okay. you send I'll, I'll send you the link. Yeah. Sure, sure. Thanks a lot. I'll do okay. that. I'll do that.
So uh, I also thank uh, Dr. Sen for taking his time out. Uh, thank you, Santunda. Finally, you came. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So thank you, everyone. I will see, you will get the notification for the next uh, talk sure, very sure, soon, sure. which is which would be happening in next mm. month in February. Okay. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you for joining. Thanks, and thanks for my side also. Thanks a lot. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank okay. you, Kushi. Thank you, Jyotimoy, for organizing. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye.